And now you might be wondering, okay, this is cool, but how can we create those arrows and different steps to make it seem like you're making these transformations to the building mass? I can show you how to do that as well. So we'll go back to Rhino and we'll go back to perspective. We'll type in show to show our geometry. Let's say we can simplify this building process to three steps. This is the final, so I'll say step three. And we'll create two more steps. Step one and step two. Now, we'll work our way backwards so to see how this can go. So maybe we'll go back to step two and type in box to create a courtyard. Maybe this courtyard can be about 40 meters tall. I'll copy this geometry over to step one, copy objects to layer. I'll shut that layer off, and then I'll shut this one off as well. We'll make a copy of this and put it in the same place. Copy to clipboard, and then type in paste. Oh, actually, I'll do offset surface. Offset surface, and we'll flip direction, type in F. Distance 18 meters, and that's perfect. Now this time I'm, I won't be deleting the outline, but we'll just simply select what's inside and control click the outside box to deselect it. Now we want to simply click on this blue z-axis scale bar to scale it all the way up so that this is taller than the outside geometry and subtract it using boolean difference. Click that and press enter. Now we have three steps created. So step one is just a single pure box. And second is where it's a courtyard. And number three is where the building mass is pulled up. Now, these steps are created, but we want the arrows to des describe what's actually happening. So step one will be say, let's say this is extrusion. Maybe I'll rename it to, so that we can remember extrusion. And perhaps second two, I mean step two, can be about to create courtyard, courtyard, and number three is um, increase. Okay. Now, extrusion usually involves arrows that are pointing up, and these arrows tend to be very thick and flat. So. Ahead and let's make the arrows a sub-layer within the step one and make it red so we can tell what it is. And yeah, as you can see, Big always uses 3D arrows to describe what their actions are. This is so that you get a spatial sense of like what's actually happening to this building. I guess in this example, it's almost half-half, but we'll use 3D arrows to explain everything. And 3D arrows are kind of difficult to draw for uh, freehand, but if you create them in 3D, it'll be much easier. You'll see why. Um, first off, I'm going to go ahead and create the arrow by pressing P, polyline. First off, I'm going to create two parallel lines and create another line that bridges the two. And what's going to happen is I'm going to copy over this line this way, maybe to the middle. And draw another line that goes like so. And maybe we'll stretch it out this way, like that. And I hit move, we'll move it over. And we'll just recycle this line that's over here. Now we can trim this out. Perfect. This is a handsome looking arrow. We'll type in join to create a continuous loop of lines and type in planar surface, which creates a planar surface enclosed by curves. And if your curves were perfectly flat, it'll, it'll be successful in creating those lines. If you are not able to create the surface, try type in project to surface, uh, project to seaplane, and then delete us. Uh, input objects, say yes. It'll project the curves to the C plane and make it perfectly flat. And try the steps again. 
Okay, so extrusion involves geometries that are moving vertically. So I'll hit the Y axis, rotation axis, lines, and type in 90 degrees. And clearly we're going backwards, so I'll type in 180 to turn it all over. And move the arrow over so that it's in the correct place. And I'll copy that over. So that we can have arrows in many directions. Okay, I'm gonna just right over there. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll copy these arrows by right clicking on the arrow layer and duplicate layer and objects. Now we have a second arrow layer which will drag over to the step two and effectively copy the arrows to the step two as well. We'll shut down the step one and move the arrows in such a way that it describes the second step that we're making. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer and this time I'll turn this around like last time 180 and let's put that inside the courtyard so it seems like we're making action and happening in this. Okay, so the final step will be same. We'll copy that arrow, copy, copy, drag that over to step three, and let's get into it. For the final step, we want the arrow to point upwards again, and this time we want it to be right above the tip. So that we can describe what's happening. Now feel free to adjust the uh, arrow shape. To adjust the arrow shapes and rotations. Um, this is not the case for all projects, but many projects that they present tend to be very sensitive with the shape and the strength of the arrow to almost give you in intuitive understanding of what the building actions are or what design actions are. So since like dragging this up is like a very light and fast, powerful move, I want to make it long and skinny. But extrusion, I think, needs to be very heavy and thick, but perhaps short arrow. We will repeat the make 2D process all over again. Make 2D. Do that. And one thing you have to be careful here is to make sure your geometries are always staying in the same place and just shimmy them over by the same amount, say I'll do 300, that's pretty good. And we'll go over to the step 2 and say 2D. All the settings can be identical and they'll get organized into the same layer as well, which is very helpful. Now this time we'll select both and move them over by 300 again. And then turn on step 3. Make sure to select that arrow, make 2D. Okay. Uh, one thing I realized is that we're in a reverse order, so we can change that real quick. I'll do one, and the selection, let's flip this guy, flip that guy, and flip this guy. You can already kind of tell like what's happening from this step to that step to this step. Now, before we export, we have to do our outline. We can select them all together and do curve boolean. Maybe I'll create a new layer called outline this time. Go to that layer. This time we'll make it orange. And type in curve boolean. Now, before we export it, one thing you might have realized is that on this step, that line's not entirely working very well. And this is something we could have done without the arrows and add the arrows later, but I'll just go ahead and fix this pretty quickly. I'll invert the selection and lock, which leaves us with just this outline curves. I'll explode it and delete some geometries that I do not want and take the remaining geometries and fill it them together. We'll type in fillet. Radius should be zero. 
and click two lines that you want to join. And the sign and that curve, these two curves can join, and there we go. Now, we'll type in unlock again. And we don't want to export our 3D geometry, so I'll turn that off for now. Now, one last thing I want to do before we export this is to create the artboards. Now, I'll create one box just like that. And then, oh, might have to make it move a little bit. Yeah, there we go. And then click one part of the building that, st that stays consistent, such as this point. And I'll just copy them over in that spot. So the reason I create them is so that I can create artboards around these boxes. And that way, our building footprint will stay consistent and it'll look as if our building is transforming. step by step, we'll overwrite what we had, and go back to Illustrator. Now we're in Illustrator with our diagrams. I'll select everything and scale them up. Oh, and now we can't see anything, so we'll see you later. Through. Okay, that looks pretty good. Actually, I'm going to make it a little smaller. Now we'll take the artboard layer and select everything and hit D to make this default color. So hit none to make sure there's no fill. So as you can see, this is the uh, outline layers that we've just created. And what, we're, what I'm going to do is hit the artboard tool and click on individual artboard boxes that we created. And as you can see, artboards are created around these boxes to fit the contents perfectly. We can, without escaping, we'll delete the existing artboard so that we're left with these three diagrams. Now we'll repeat the process that we did. Like, oh, we can actually delete the artboard layers now. And that's gone. Select everything. Hit D. And go over to outline. And make these lines say. Two is pretty good. Yeah. And we'll hit. Oh, it's because these lines are not joined. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is lock the outline all again and select everything by Control A and use the paint bucket tool to paint things in. So we'll hit K or click on this icon and activate these drawings to start painting them in. I'll start with the arrows, I'll choose the green again, color the courtyards, then we can use lighter gray this time for the long side. Let's do that. Okay. And then we'll use a slightly darker tone for the short side. Just a little bit. Color those in. Now we have actually forgotten this one arrow, so we'll go ahead and change that again. You can hit I to sample, I mean Alt, while selecting the paint bucket tool, and you'll be able to sample colors that are in your canvas. And now you have red in your foreground color, and we can simply color that in. There we go we'll get a very, very light gray to paint the top. There we go. Now right now the outlines are on top of the arrows, so I'll take the outline layer and bring them down, like so. I want to organize them a little bit in such a way that the regular lines are beneath the outline and arrows are on top of the outline. Go and delete the art for later. And there we go, we have the big diagram. Feel free to play around with the line weights and colors to make it to suit your project. And happy diagramming! Peace out, guys! <laughs>